Ed Reed versus Bethune Cookman. Yes, versus Bethune Cookman is a really interesting story, but it has reached its conclusion. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked on HBCU podcast, your number one. Daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked on podcast network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked on HBCU your first listen of the day every day and remember just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over no 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 it just means to look right around here and follow me on twitter at south exclusives don't forget the s on the end if you're on the audio side of things and today's episode is brought to you by linkedin they're going to help you find the qualified candidates that you need and want to talk to faster just post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions do apply but i know why you're here i know exactly why you clicked on today it wasn't because of the thumbnail. It wasn't because of the because of the title. It's because you knew what we were going to be discussing. And I'm going to give it to you. Ed Reed versus Bethune Cookman. Yes, this feels like a matchup. Ed Reed versus Bethune Cookman. For me, it comes down to a simple tagline. It's what you do versus how you do it. If you want to talk about communication, it's about delivery. It's not just about what you say. It's about how you say it. And I'm going to tell you this, and I hope this doesn't ruffle any feathers or rub anybody the wrong way. But if you think that delivery... How you say it is not an important part of communication. Chances are you are not a good communicator. Because a lot of times, delivery is just as important as what you say. A lot of people won't even get your message if you don't give it the right way. How you say things. And if you're going to be a communicator, you know this. Like, this isn't, this isn't coddling. This is not babying. This is just a fact when it comes to communication. I can tell you something right now. But if I'm yelling at you, you might not get the point. If I just sit here and I talk to you, you might get the point a little better. And when it comes to Ed Reed versus Bethune Cookman, this is what you do versus how you do it. Because we're not just talking about the Instagram live rant. There's more to it. Um, I will say this. If you are pro Ed, there'll be some things in here that you're going to like. If you are anti Ed, there's going to be some things in here that you like. Because I personally, I started off anti-Ed. It might seem like at points that I'm going to be doing a 180, but really I'm just doing a 90. Because instead of going from completely pro Bethune Cookman and now saying, man, Bethune Cookman screwing up completely, I actually just see both sides. I don't have a side. And I think you're allowed to do that. I think this is a situation that is a lot more nuanced than a lot of people are going to make it. But... Luckily, I host a show where I get to elaborate on my nuanced view of this over the next 25 to 30 minutes. And I appreciate you for coming in and tapping in with it, too. Let's look. Let's look at why I say delivery matters and what you do versus how you do it. See, when you deliver something poorly, which Ed Reed did, your message a lot of times is washed away. It's not lost on people. I think a lot of people in this situation see what Ed says and says, you know what? There might be some validity to that. I don't know if we all felt that way immediately. I think we all kind of had an emotional reaction to it as soon as it happened. Why are you bashing HBCUs? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I do think there's some claim to be like, why would you go out there and handle it this way? But that's the format that he chose. I don't even have so much of a problem right now at this point talking about it with the format. But the simple fact is you can't go out there and call the people who are going to hire you MFers. So here's the thing. Ed Reed had issues. With Bethune Cookman. A, go to the administration. But I know what you're saying. Why would I tell Ed Reed to go to the, to the uh, administration when we all know he had a problem with them? So, okay, Ed needs to handle this in-house. The only problem with the in-house argument is that he didn't trust the people he's in the house with. So he's not going to talk to the administration because that's who he's actually ranting about. That's who he actually has problems with. And as much as we would like him to just go and have that conversation I'm going to work under the assumption that he did have these conversations because he said how they're laughing and there there's no trust there. So here goes the second option. Here's a little bit of an alternative. Instead of going on Instagram live, call Dion. 
Because the first thing you said was Prime was not wrong. Well, if Prime wasn't wrong, Prime was here for two years, he was able to navigate and lead his team at Jackson State to a lot of success. If you got a problem with an administration and you see that you're going through some of the same things he did, how about you get on the phone with your big brother and say, hey, how were you able to navigate these situations? How did you bypass some of these things? I think that's a very effective alternative. But the one thing you can't do is go on Instagram Live and tell people they MF is this, MF is that. Because the way you talk about people is a little bit different. It just it just is, you know, in the format where like you might be able to say this to a teammate, but you can't say this about people who are giving you a job. Like. Here's my thing. So I was just I'm, I'm reading I'm currently reading 50 Cent's book. Right. And he was talking about his 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 story from being in the streets to being in a boardroom and how the things he was saying in the streets. The repercussions are way different versus if you say the same exact things in, in the boardroom. And of course, that sounds like a no brainer, but there's just certain words. It's like, what? And you have to adjust. That's the idea. You have to be able to adjust. And I'll tell you what, I think you can be pro Ed Reed and still admit that he shouldn't have went about it the way he did. Jaden Bivens, the running back for Bethune Cookman, was able to do that. Like, okay, maybe his 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 delivery wasn't the greatest, but what he's saying, he wasn't lying. I think that's an okay take, and I don't think that's not taking his side. See, here's the other thing: is he was clearing out ground for a facility. What you do versus how you do it. Apparently, he ain't getting no permit. That's what I'm hearing. He ain't get a permit, but he's trying to clear ground. You can't do that. You can't try to clear ground and not get a permit. What you're trying to clear ground for is great. Build new facilities. That's amazing. It's amazing. There's no taking that from him. What you're doing is great. However, how you do it, not getting a permit, well, you can't you can't do that. That like that's not allowed, you know? And I heard that's what another thing that rubbed Bethune Cookman administration the wrong way. And I really don't think everybody knew what they were getting themselves into. Bethune did. Bethune knew they were getting a high profile, intelligent leader to be their coach. And you know what? I know that like, oh, you saying this, you shouldn't have done that. That's not a very intelligent move. That's that's an intelligent guy in Ed Reed, but passion and emotion will get the best of you. Emotion and logic are dire enemies. Like they don't go together. A lot of times when you're emotional, you can't really understand logic. And sometimes logic does not understand emotion. See, as a person who I think is a little 50-50, I'm a very emotional person. I understand where people are coming from. But Ed didn't seem like he knew what he was getting himself into. I was talking to Mo Cardi. Y'all know I'm just going to call him Mo from now on because I think by now you, you should know who Mo is. But I was talking to Mo. That first Instagram live video where you're going or the second one where he's driving around the golf cart, it almost felt like he wasn't on campus. Like he didn't know what he was getting into before he signed up for this job. I could see that. Like, wow, this is really worse than I thought it was going to be. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think they had the right coach, but I don't think that Ed Reed had the right situation. I do think he got relatively acclimated to it. And I don't want you to think I'm just, like I said, just doing a complete 180. There's still stuff from there I didn't like in his rant. Like, I still didn't like the Save the Day rhetoric, mostly because I felt like he was opening himself up for criticism down the line. However, we never got down the line. So that's kind of a moot point at this, at this, uh, at this juncture, right? This is a situation where... I just felt like it was it was adding a level of a level of criticism that he was not going to be able to bypass. But we just never got to that point. So we'll see. We're going to continue going forward this all day. This is what we're talking about. We talked about it all weekend. And I'll say this and I'll say it again. There's no way I'm vilifying Ed Reed. I think he's a guy with a great heart who went about the things he wanted to do the wrong way. If you're pro Ed, you're going to see some things you like. If you're anti Ed, you're going to see some things you like. We're going to talk about how what he what he did or what he wanted to do really gained the hearts of athletes and students versus how he did it is a big reason on why he got fired. We're going to start off with the how he did it as we continue with Locked on HBCU. Before I get into that, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And it's for all of my small business owners and maybe even Bethune-Cookman administration. If you're looking for somebody who you know is going to be right for the job, go ahead and get on LinkedIn. The resumes are there. If you see passionate, might want to treat that guy right. No, I'm not trying to poke fun at Bethune Cookman. Let me not do that. But for real, for my small business owners, if you guys are somebody who said, you know, we're in the market for somebody who does X, Y, and Z, you can go to LinkedIn, post your job for free using the purple hashtag hiring frame, and you can find somebody who does X, Y, and Z. 
Over 800 million people are on LinkedIn on a weekly basis. There's no way you can't find somebody who fits exactly what you want for your company and the vice versa goes. There's people who are looking for employees. So if you need a job, if you're trying to get into a certain field, go to LinkedIn. It's easy, man. This is not just for my small business owners. This is not just for people looking for employees. It's also for people who are looking for work. So go ahead and post your job for free or hop in, create yourself a LinkedIn account. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on college and you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. As we continue rolling with today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. I want you guys to go ahead and tap into Locked On College Basketball, which is everything you need around the sport of NCAA basketball in one place, wherever you listen to your podcast, including YouTube, just like this here pod here. Now, here's the thing. I don't think there's a need, a need to vilify anybody. I said it at the end of the last segment. I'm going to say it at the beginning of this one. There's no need to vilify anybody. I don't think that Bethune Cookman screwed Ed Reed. I don't. And I don't think that Ed Reed is a bad guy. I just think this is too sides of a very unfortunate situation where both of these people are standing on principle and I kind of understand where they're coming from. We're going to go ahead and start off with Bethune Cookman because we got to talk about why he got fired. First off, it does feel weird to say he got fired seeing that we know he was not under contract. And please stop announcing things. Like I had a segment that was kind of irrelevant about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was a segment that I thought was interesting, but why... It's so quiet about Ed Reed. It turned out he wasn't under contract. That's why things were so quiet. And you had little words like in in uh, um, um, in concept. I don't want to hear no in concept. Tell me the man signed on the dotted line. Until then, don't announce it. Also, if you don't announce it, he's probably not going on Instagram Live airing out everything that's happening on campus because nobody even knows he's hired. But neither here nor there. There was a lot of things. For example, the... the, the uh, the clearing the ground can't do that. You know, there was some there's things I heard that I'm not going to repeat because I don't want to get into too much hearsay because I don't know everything for sure. But that was one of the things that I felt sounded a little bit more legit. And I can come on here and say. But for me, this whole situation boils down to how can you overlook That's what this. This is what it comes down to. The situation comes down to how can you overlook the Instagram live rant if you can. That's really what it comes down to, because there's so many other things. And here's my thing. If, if you don't understand why Ed was fired, you're probably very pro Ed. I'm not saying that you have to agree. But I understand. You know what I mean? That, that's all I'm asking for is a little bit of understanding and disagreement. Disagreement and understanding aren't polar opposites. You can understand why somebody made a decision and not agree. Matter of fact. I called my guy Ross to help me out with this, and he just had a pod just like that. So go ahead and check out Locked On Saints anytime you can, talking about the new offensive coordinator. Huh, funny enough, I'm wearing my shirt. Um, shout out to Rock. I mean, shout out to Ross. So Ed Reed came in with the vision and ambition, but that's not all that you need to succeed, right? You just simply cannot do what you did. This is my view of it. Calling your potential bosses MFers and saying how they don't trust you and how they're, they're, they're doing you wrong is a very slippery slope. When you ain't been hired, notice I said potential bosses. It's already something that might go bad for you if you're hired, but you ain't even got the job yet and you're doing this. I'll put you in the shoes of Bethune Cookman because everybody wants to be in the shoes of Ed Reed. And I won't argue the validity of what he said because I'm not on campus. I'm not having the conversation he's having. I'm not having the interactions he's having. I will not downplay what he actually said as far as the, the truth and the validity in it. Put yourself in Bethune Cookman's shoes. Say you give somebody a job offer and then all of a sudden they turn around and they're saying that the company is failing because of you. That's what happened here. Those, those broken mentalities that Ed Reed is talking about are likely the people who are responsible for hiring him making sure that his hiring went through and you're talking about them like that. How do, how do we think they were going to react? That's my question. Ed Reed hops on. He says, MF for this, MF for that about these people who are probably hiring him or pushing his hiring through. What, what, what reaction did you want from these people? What, exa what exactly did you expect them to do? But then again, it's like I said at the beginning, it comes down to can you overlook the Instagram live rant? Because if you can, you probably overlook the other things as well. Y'all know I'm into it because I'm talking with my hands now. But if you can overlook him talking about this problem and that problem and this problem and that problem, all right, I think this would have been a great hire. 
I truly do. But let me tell you what deflection looks like from other people. Not Ed Reed, but other people. People don't want to hear the truth. He's telling the truth. Those are other parts of this conversation when it talks about addressing the Bethune-Cookman leadership and what's going on in Bethune-Cookman. But to me, even if he's telling the God's honest truth, I gave you an alternative to call Prime. See how he navigated around some of these same issues. Dude, that's your big bro. I'm not just telling you to, to, to call Prime because he did this, that, and the third. No, y'all got a great relationship. Y'all love each other. Dion was able to come on there and talk about uh, the things that he overcame with Ed Reed on Instagram Live when Ed was, was addressing the, the, the uh, athletes. They got a real relationship. You could have called him. You could have found an alternative. This just isn't the way to do it, in my opinion. So, you can't, air, in my opinion, you can't air out the school. But I also told you there's a little bit more than just how he did it or what he, yeah, how he did it. It's also what he was trying to accomplish. I see all of it. There's a lot of great in it. There's a lot of great. It simply came down to you bash the people who are hiring you before you were actually hired. It's not a bright move. It's not the greatest of moves, you know. But he was trying to accomplish a lot of great things. And if you can keep rolling with me, keep riding with me, we're going to talk about some of the great things that he is trying to accomplish or was trying to accomplish. And it's more than just picking up trash on campus. So I don't want to hear just that. It's more than that as we continue with Locked on HBCU. And that's wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU. We talked about my personal opinion on this hiring, on this firing, excuse me. We talked about why I think the firing happened, because I do think he earned that. But let's talk about the greatness, what I feel like he was actually trying to accomplish. If you go past delivery, because I know I said delivery matters, and it does. However, I'm able to also look beyond how he said it and look at what he was saying. And I know that Ed Reed was somebody who... I believe really cared a lot. I believe that everything, not everything, that's not fair. I believe that most of the things that really got him where, he, where it got him was passion. But that same passion that rubbed administration wrong endeared him to the players and endeared him to the students. The relationship with the administration versus the relationship with students and student athletes, completely different. If he was only judged on how he connected with the students and the student athletes, Ed Reed would be there right now, no question about it. So many people have spoke up for him. See, here's the thing. I believe that players and students have supported Ed Reed because he's become somewhat of a, a, a voice, a face of revolt. He's a guy with a high profile who is here speaking up and speaking on the things that have rubbed certain people wrong for a while. When you've been bothered and feel like you haven't been heard and somebody with a significantly higher profile comes onto your campus in a leadership position and he vocalizes the same thing that you have a problem with, I don't think it's hard. And you see that he actually cares about the athletes. There's no question that he cared. I seen the interactions. He's talking about them not just becoming better football players, but how to craft yourself as an image or craft the image that you want to be, that you should be as Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, whether that's a student, whether that's an athlete, or whether that's just being a man, period. There's so many great things that you could take from the beginning of Ed Reed. It, listen, this is not a complete turnaround. I still think some of the things he went wrong, like for example, him saying that uh, he did more in a week than people have done in years. I can't get with that. There's no explanation for that for me. Um, the save the day rhetoric, I still didn't really like that. But I'm, I'll be a fool to sit here and act like I don't think he was connecting with these athletes. You see no Mari Hill Robinson. He came out and speaking in, full, in favor of Ed Reed, talking about, hey, Bethune, y'all know the students want him. You know the athletes want him. Students talking about, talking about uh, uh, protesting on campus today. But you know that we want him. And just like everybody says y'all do, y'all mess things up. That's what Omari Hill Robinson is saying. This is an all swag player. This is one of the best players that you have. And he's voicing his displeasure with the school, period. He says, y'all don't care about football players. Y'all don't really care about us. So I think that's why people really galvanized around Ed Reed. He wanted to build new facilities and got to it. He actually got to it. I, this is the thing about Ed Reed. Not only did he care about those players, not only did I feel like he speak up on or spoke up on a lot of the things that he already knew or these people already felt. He also wasn't just talk. Ed Reed came in and did more than talk. See, somebody, man, it's trashy. Somebody come in, your room, your room dirty. Nose up. Your room dirty. 
But how about I say your room dirty, let me help you clean it. Because Ed Reed could have just been like, this place is dirty, this place is filthy, but Thune Cookman needs to get this together. But instead, he didn't just get frustrated just to be frustrated. Ed Reed said, I'm going to be frustrated, I'm going to go do something about it. I'm not just going to stop at my team, my athletes. I'm going to go get the volleyball team, I'm going to go get other sports, and we're going to clean this thing up because we are Bethune Cookman. I didn't understand Ed Reed when he said he's not going to leave, but he should. I didn't get it. I asked the question, why, Ed? Why do, you, why do you feel some type of obligation? It ain't no obligation. He just cared, period. And you've seen it through his interactions. I, I, I don't know any other way to put it. There, there's, there's, I don't want to continue to say people are vilifying him, but I do feel like people are painting him as this bad guy, as this bad person, when I think that he's just extremely passionate. He's a little off in the head. Bro, people get emotional. People go through things. People feel things. But because he's an, a, a former NFL player, CTE, off in the head, must be the hits. No, I think that trash is just a trigger for this man. I seen the frustration when it came to the Baltimore Ravens locker room. And I think that maybe when he saw that trash, it led to him exposing everything that he had been holding in for a week. And he was wrong for that. He was wrong for going out there and calling them people this, that, and the third. That was not something that was meant to be on Instagram Live. You cannot talk about your potential employers like that before you even sign the dotted line and think that you're going to remain hired. I can say that. I can remain critical without ignoring everything. This is a tough situation. I wish they would have gotten past it. I can't blame Bethune for not wanting to get past it, but I really wish that they would have gotten past it because I think that Ed Reed was destined to do something special at Bethune-Cookman, and unfortunately, we didn't get to see it. Some of that is Ed's fault. Some of that is Bethune's fault. They got to share the blame in this situation. That's just what it is. But going forward, not even going forward, on tomorrow's episode, we're going to continue talking about this situation. We're gonna, And I'm sure there's something in my notes. I just Really, I just got to talking like I just felt it. I don't know what happened. Usually I try to reference my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything, but I'll go through and I'll, I'll look after I do this. But this has been a, an impassioned podcast, and I think that this topic is not over. We're going to talk tomorrow on the idea of celebrity coaching. I don't even like that term, but whatever. I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. I'm going to look at Eddie George, Ed Reed, and Deion Sanders, three big-time celebrity coaches that have been going forward or who have been going on for the last couple of years. And we're going to look at it, how those three situations were all met with similar fanfare coming in, but the result process in Ed Reed's case or Ed, Eddie George's case has been significantly different. Same entrance, different exits, different results, different processes. We're going to talk about that on tomorrow's episode, but I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day today. Please spread the word. I love this episode. I haven't listened to it back, but I love this episode already. Please spread the word, but through it or not, HBCU or not, spread the word and let's talk about this situation. I want to know how you feel. Drop your comments in the comment or in the uh, yeah comment section below or tweet me at Twitter at South Exclusives. Boom. See, you do it just like that. Then I know. But, yeah, I appreciate y'all making us your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, check out Locked On College Basketball, everything you need around the sport in one place, including YouTube. And for your uh, yeah, and for your second listen, come back and check me out today. Now I'm losing track of everything. But in the meantime, in between time, I really do appreciate you guys. I really, really do. I can't, I can't express that enough. In the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter, at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family. Take care. Stay blessed. Peace.